Okay, so welcome to the second video in which we are discussing uh, how to prevent a uh, certain protein being expressed within a cell uh, using short hairpin RNAs. Okay, so what we have done so far is we have stuck in this plasmid with our gene for the shRNA. What has happened is this gene has then been um, transcribed into a piece of mRNA, and the mRNA is specially designed so that it has this sequence of organic bases where there are two portions, uh, and the second portion is uh, has a complementary sequence of organic bases to this first portion, but in reverse, basically. And what this then means is that the uh, mRNA is then capable of folding up like so to form a hairpin, and this now is called the pry shRNA. Okay, right. Now, I have drawn a picture where there are four organic bases in this double-stranded portion here. In reality, there will be far more than four, okay? Uh, so, but this gets the um, overall um, concept across, okay? So you have these two um, regions which have been specially designed so that they can bind together and fold the mRNA into this hairpin shape. Now what's going to happen, basically, is that uh, a protein is going to come and bind to this um, double-stranded RNA. So understand, double-stranded RNA is something quite unusual, okay? Now there are certain proteins which can bind to uh, double-stranded RNA. Now one of these proteins is called DGCR8. And at this stage, this hairpin structure is still within the nucleus. Okay, and therefore this protein is also within the nucleus. So let me draw my hairpin structure here. Okay, and what's going to now happen is this protein is going to come and bind to this region of double-stranded RNA. So you have a region here of double-stranded RNA, and for short, double-stranded RNA is called dsRNA. Okay, so a certain protein is going to come and bind to this double-stranded RNA. Now, it does not care what the actual sequence of organic bases in this double-stranded RNA is. It will bind to whichever double-stranded RNA it likes. It recognises the fact that it is double-stranded RNA. It is not specific to a certain sequence of organic bases within that piece of double-stranded RNA. Okay, right, so I highlight this protein in orange, and this is the DGCR8 protein. Okay, so this is DGCR8, and it's a member of the double-stranded RNA binding proteins. Okay, right, uh, now what's going to happen is DGCR8, now that it's bound to the double-stranded RNA of our pry shRNA, it's going to recruit another protein, which is called Drosia, okay? So now another protein is going to come and bind on top of uh, the DGCR8, and this protein is called Drosia, okay? So Drosia. Now, Drosia is an example of uh, a type 3 ribonuclease. Okay, so basically it's an example of a ribonuclease of the type 3. Now, for short, ribonuclease is usually more often abbreviated to RNAs. Okay, so R for ribo, N for nucle, and then A's on the end, so an RNAs. Okay, and this is a type 3 RNAs. Okay, now type 3 RNAs enzymes are enzymes which cut double-stranded RNA. So they are specific for double-stranded RNA. They won't cut single-stranded RNA, they will cut double-stranded RNA. Okay, so you might be starting to see maybe what's going to happen. Okay, so here is Drosia, now bound to our pry shRNA. And what's going to happen is it's going to cut this portion that is double-stranded. Now, it cuts it somewhere down here, basically. And the effect of that is going to be that it releases these two tails, basically. Okay, 
Uh, it does not cut it up here, so it doesn't get rid of the loop up here yet. That will happen later, basically. Okay, so it's going to cut both strands at once. Okay, so it's going to produce a double strand uh, cut. Okay, now there's something else that's quite important about how uh, the enzyme Drosha, this RNA's free enzyme, is going to cut the double-stranded RNA. And this is that it's going to leave a uh, two-nucleotide long overhang at the free prime end. So let's relabel up our mRNA with free prime and five prime orientation. And let's now discuss what this means. So, let's say here we have the end portion of this double-stranded portion here, and then it goes off, basically. It's no longer double-stranded. Okay, so let's say maybe we have adenine and then uracil here. Okay, uh, let's say we have uh, uracil and adenine again, to keep this nice and simple. And then maybe we'll put cytosine and guanine here. Uh, maybe another G, C, a, U, A, just like that. Okay, right. So what's going to happen is when this Drosha enzyme cuts, okay, firstly, it doesn't necessarily cut it right at the end here. It, for instance, at, this is meant to represent the absolute end of the double-stranded RNA. Okay, so after this, you'll then have uh, the uh, portions where it's no longer bound to one another because these two are no longer complementary. Okay, so C, and then maybe we have an A over there. Okay, uh, but it doesn't necessarily cut it right at the end here. But to illustrate the point, the important thing to understand is that what it's going to do is it's not going to cut the double-stranded RNA just straight across. Instead, it's going to stagger the cut. It's going to cut it like this, basically. Okay, so here's the free prime end. Here's the five prime end. Okay, and the free prime end is basically going to get a two nucleotide long overhang compared to the five prime end, which is over here. Okay, right. Uh, so it's going to cut the RNA here, and it's going to cut the RNA here. These two pieces now, this piece here and this piece here, which I'll highlight in blue, they're going to go. They're going to be chopped off. Okay, and what you're going to end up with is something that looks now like this. So let's draw the thing out again now that it's been cut. Okay, so we've got uracil here, then with adenine, and then our final organic base on this side, where the 5' prime end now is. We'll have a cytosine there, then guanine, and then we'll have this two nucleotide long overhang here, where we have cytosine and uracil. So this is what's meant by a two nucleotide, and often you'll see nucleotide abbreviated to NT, and then they'll put free prime, because it's on the free prime side, not the five prime side, and then they'll say, call it an overhang. So basically, the way uh, Drosha cuts the double-stranded RNA produces this uh, two nucleotide long free prime overhang. Okay, so the overall result of this now is that what we've now got is, I'll draw this on the other side now. Okay, what we have now got is something that looks kind of like this. Okay, so we've got our hairpin loop still here, and then we've got the double-stranded RNA, and then it ends just before you then have this two nucleotide overhang. So this is the free prime end, and this is the five prime end. Okay, now this structure that we've got now is then called the pre, okay, uh, short uh, hairpin RNA. So this is now called the pre-SH RNA. So it's important, therefore, to distinguish between the pri-SH RNA and the pre-SH RNA. The pre-SH RNA is the pri-SH RNA once it's had these two dangly ends chopped off, basically. Okay, right. Uh, now what's going to happen is the pre-SH RNA is going to get transported out of the nucleus. So at present, everything has been occurring within the nucleus of the cell. So if this is the cell, everything has been happening within the nucleus of the cell. Okay, but now this pre-SH RNA is going to get transported out of the nucleus. Okay, and this is done by a little protein uh, called exportin-5. Okay, so this is 
exporting 5. Now, in order for exporting 5 to function, it needs to have another protein uh, stuck onto it. And this other protein is on the nuclear side, basically. So it's a nuclear protein. Okay, so I'll cover both of these in. Okay, I don't want to smudge it, so actually I might wait for the ink to dry a bit more before I colour them in. Okay, but this second protein is what's known as RAN protein. Okay, now RAN protein is a G protein, and its name um, it stands for RAS-related nuclear protein. So the RA is for RAS-related, so it's for RA of RAS, basically. And then the N is just for nuclear protein. Okay, now the RAS proteins are monomeric G proteins, so that suggests that this may well be a G protein too, if it's related to RAS, and indeed it is a G protein. So G proteins have two states, all of them have two states. They have an off state, okay, where the G protein is bound to GDP, so I'll get, use this uh, RAM protein as an example. So RAM protein in its off state, and the same for all the other G proteins, will have guanosine diphosphate bound to it, GDP bound to it, and this is the off state. And then it also has an on state, and in the on state, it will have guanosine triphosphate bound to it, GTP. So here is guanosine triphosphate. Right, so this is the on state. So basically, what the exporting 5 protein needs is it needs the RAM protein, which is here in turquoise. It basically needs that in the on state. So it needs a RAM GTP molecule here to come along, bind to it, and then exporting 5, which I've got here in pink, uh, this will become active and it will start moving at the pre-SHRNA molecules from the nucleus out into the cytoplasm. Okay, so let's assume that exporting 5 is working perfectly well, and that the pre-SHRNA has now been moved from the uh, nucleus into the cytoplasm. What happens to it now? Well, basically, it's now going to have the hairpin loop. Uh, chopped off it. So we've already had this side chopped off it. We're now going to have the stuff on this side, the junk on this side, chopped off it. Okay, so it's a very similar process. What has to happen first is that a protein which recognizes double-stranded RNA has to bind to the double-stranded RNA, and then it will recruit an enzyme, which will again be a member of the RNA's free family of enzymes, that will come and cut the double-stranded RNA. Okay, so, now it's in the cytoplasm, what will come and happen? So if I draw our pre-SHRNA now, so here's our pre-SHRNA uh, pre with its uh, free prime overhang over here of two nucleotides. Here is the um, hairpin loop here, so this is the free prime end, this is the five prime end. And now what's going to come and happen is a protein which binds to double-stranded RNA is going to come and bind to the double-stranded RNA. And this is now all happening uh, within the cytoplasm. Okay, so, uh, there are two options for this protein, basically. It can either be a protein that is known as TRBP, okay, and TRBP uh, stands for Transactivation Response RNA Binding Protein. Okay, so the T is all for transactivation response. Okay, so all of that is the T. Okay, and then the RBP is for uh, RNA binding protein. Okay, so TRBP is one of the possible proteins uh, which can bind to the double-stranded RNA of the uh, pre-SHRNA uh, now. Another possibility is a protein that is called PACT, okay? And PACT stands for Protein Activator of PKR, okay? So really this just stands for Protein Activator, but its full name is Protein Activator of PKR. Okay, so the P is for Protein, the ACT is then for Activator, okay? So this is the Protein Activator of PKR. P K 
R. Right, so either one of these proteins can bind to the double-stranded RNA now. Okay, and what's going to happen is another protein, which is an enzyme, and it's an RNA's type 3 enzyme, is going to come and bind on top of uh, the uh, double-stranded RNA binding protein. Okay, now this next example uh, of an RNA's type 3 is an enzyme known as DISA. Okay, so the next enzyme that's come along is DISA. And again, this is an example of a ribonuclease of the type 3, an RNA's type 3. Okay, so again, it's going to cut double-stranded RNA. Now, this time, what's going to happen is it's going to target the RNA up at this side. Okay, so let me draw a picture of this then. So... Here is our double-stranded RNA portion, and I'm not drawing the full thing, so I won't have the 2' prime overhang, because this is assumed to just be, you know, the top portion, okay? Right, and let's make up some combinations here. Let's, so let's say this was an adenine, then we had a uracil here. Uh, I was just about to put thymine, but then I remembered better. Then we'll have uracil and adenine, uh, guanine, cytosine, cytosine, guanine, uh, we will have put one more for to complete it, okay, and then up here will be the hairpin loop, okay, so of course the uh, organic bases here will not be complementary, so you might have an adenine there and a cytosine there, okay, and then it will continue on and form the whole hairpin loop. Now, um, this is the 3' prime end here, and this is the 5' prime end, but if you think about it, if we were standing here, this would be the free prime end of this strand here. And if we were standing here, this would be the five prime end of this strand here. So what's now going to happen is again, um, the dicer enzyme isn't going to just cut the double-stranded RNA straight across. It's going to do it, um, leaving an overhang. And this time it's going to look like so. Whoops. Okay. So basically, again, it's exactly like it did before, okay? But this time, which side is the free prime portion? This is the free prime portion. Imagine cutting up there. We've then got this piece of RNA here. This is the five prime end of that RNA. This must be the free prime end. And again, if we cut up here, this is the free prime end of the RNA. So that must be the five prime end. So again, this is a two uh, nucleotide. Uh, free prime overhang. Okay, so what now is going to happen is the whole of the hairpin loop is going to be cut off. Okay, and what are you going to be left with? Well, basically, you're going to be left with this double stranded piece of RNA, like so. Okay, and you'll have a two nucleotide long overhang down here, and also a two nucleotide overhang up here. Okay, so you have the free prime portion of this strand down here, the five prime portion of this strand up here, the free prime portion of this second strand up here, and the five prime portion of this second strand down here. Okay, and this structure that you now have is known as the mature shRNA. Okay, and basically it's just a piece of uh, double-stranded RNA. Okay, now, importantly, the um, double-stranded RNA binding protein, which is either TRBP or PACT, will still be bound to this mature shRNA, as will uh, the um, RNA's type 3 enzyme, which is DISA. Okay, so let me just draw these in here. So here is our double-stranded RNA binding protein, and then here is our enzyme, DISA. Okay, and we'll take the story from here in the next video.